Good morning and welcome to City Road Baptist Church service at home. We thank God for his goodness and his grace, how he has been helping us and keeping us through the past few weeks. As we draw near today, my theme is unconditional love. I wonder whether you have ever experienced unconditional love. I pray that as I go through the word this morning, that we will come to that place where we recognize that unconditional love is not just to be received, but it is to give. Let's pause for a moment of quiet reflection. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together this morning. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Help us to lift our hearts and our voice in thanksgiving for your glory and your kingdom's sake. Amen. Amen. Have you ever felt that you did not deserve to be loved because of what you have done, what you have been through, how you have treated someone else? It is not an uncommon feeling or experience. But I want to say to you this morning, wherever you've been, whatever you may have done, that God still loves you. And his love is transforming. When we receive the love that comes from the Father, and applied to our lives, then we begin to see the person that is hidden under the harshness of life that we've been through. Let's draw near to Father and open our hearts to him this morning. Father God, we come to you. And sometimes we wonder how we manage to live without your knowledge and without your love. We come this morning as a nation, as a world, and we carry upon our shoulders the needs that are expressed in so many ways. Right across our globe, there are those who are suffering from all kinds of needs. And Father, we know that your eyes are never closed. But I thank you that you have given to humanity a responsibility to care for one another. Lord Jesus, you came and you died and you showed us how to live, how to love, how to serve, and how to enjoy life. But as we look around us, we confess our own selfishness. We confess our own failures in reaching out to one another, in closing our eyes and turning aside rather than opening our eyes and responding to the needs of each other. Father, I pray that your spirit that you have given to us through your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, will continue to encourage us, will continue to draw us closer to you so that we might see more clearly the needs that are around us and begin to move in that direction. Lord, I want to thank you for all those who are working tirelessly in this pandemic that we find ourselves. Those who are selfless, in their willingness to sacrifice their own life to minister to those who are in need. Father, I thank you that that kind of love is expressing itself even though the danger of death is ever present. Forgive us, Lord, when we are more concerned about our own well-being than the well-being of others. Forgive us, Lord, when we're looking for change in others rather than allowing the change to begin within us. Forgive us, Lord, when we hold back what we have, seeing the need expressed in front of us because we are fearful that we may not have enough for tomorrow. Lord, forgive us, we pray. And let there be a stream that flows from your heart and flows through your people and flow out into the community that the world might see and know that there is a God of grace and a God of mercy in whom, Father, there is hope. Lord, open the eyes of your people. Open the eyes, Father, of your church so that we might begin to shine the light and bring the salt where it is needed. <clears throat> we bring to you those who are sick, Father, those who are not only sick in body but in spirit and mind who need your healing touch. Lord, I pray that you will send out workers to minister, to encourage, to support and to offer the hope that comes only from you. We pray for our own local church and for those members who are going through, Father, that mire of bereavement. Again, the family, Father, has been, been 
hit again by another member being called home. Lord, you know the family members. I pray that you will strengthen them as they go through this time of sadness. I pray the light of hope, Father, will lift them and carry them through. I pray for those, Father, as we eased gradually back out of lockdown, who are, Lord, timid about what the future hold, as to whether or not there will be a job for them, as to whether or not they'll be able to cope as they go back into society. Lord, I pray that you will let your light shine. Let it shine out with hope and glory. Let the truth that sets us free be evident in the church this day, Father. For we give you all the honor and the glory. And Lord, we confess our own inadequacy, Lord, our own blindness. We pray that you might help us to turn our eyes upon you afresh and to open our ear to your word and to respond to your calling as you beckon us to take the high road and to set a path and a pattern for our world to come to know the living Lord who created us. These things we ask for your glory, for the relief of our nation, for the healing of our nation. And for your kingdom's sake. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And help us not to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever Amen. and ever. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. As I share some notices with you, Maxine is going to come and read to us afterwards. Thank you, Maxine and Joseph. Thank you to those of you who are making the effort to bring your tithes and your offering. Again, as I said time and time again, you know, I'm confident that as at the time when we get back together, God will provide and he is our resource and he is our everything. Again, I want to thank you for your cooperation in the work of the kingdom, in your willingness to reach out, to pray, in your willingness to go and visit, in your willingness to take goods to those who are in need, in your willingness to stand with each other, to bring counsel, in your willingness to just pray with one another in your willingness to reach beyond the borders of the church and to reach into the world, because that's what God has called us to do. Whenever the Lord lays something on your heart, my sisters, my brothers, remember that he will enable you. For those who are sick, my sister, my brother, I want to encourage you to hold on to the word of God. That song we sing so often, I'm going to hold on, I'm going to hold on to God. As you hold on, he will never let you go. And so let us strive to walk in the way of the Lord and to allow the Lord to, to just bring us through in the name of Jesus and for his kingdom's sake. I am confident that once we're out of this lockdown, the church is going to spring up and many will come to our Lord. So continue to pray for one another and support one another in Jesus' name. Maxine is going to come and read to us. And afterward, our sister is going to come and bring a testimony. Um, Winsome will just share something of what her and her husband has been through and I just ask that her testimony will be received and will be of benefit to us. May God bless you. Maxine, come and read to us. Greetings to you once again in the precious name of Jesus. Our reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I will read from the New International Version, and I will read verses 1 to 8. Paul, the writer, starts by saying, And yet I will show you the most excellent way. He says, If I speak in the tongues of men and or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries, all the knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. 
If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It helps, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen. Morning, brothers and sisters. We planned was to go on a cruise in April of this year. We booked it last year. Um, none of us will see what was going to happen. And so we were excited about going the cruise. We found the right date, the right cruise that we wanted, the islands that we showing the islands that we wanted to see. And then after Christmas um, there was on the news about a virus in China. At the time it was just in China, so it wasn't in Europe or anywhere else. So we still planned looking forward to the cruise. And then towards the end of Feb, beginning of March, things seemed to change. But people were still going on holidays and cruise because the government didn't say you couldn't go. And so we were still looking forward to going. And then it, the, everything seemed to change daily. And then we 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 always put God in everything that we do. And so we continued to look forward because we couldn't cancel it because we'd lose our deposit. Then came that those travelling towards the end of March, their cruise was cancelled. Then if you were 70, you advised not to go. Still, our dates were still not cancelled. So we continued praying. And then about two weeks before we were due to go, the government changed and said no no holiday should be taking place. And by then the virus seemed to have escalated throughout Europe and then far further fields in the West Indies and seemed to be all over the place, over the world. People were stranded on their cruise ships. And so... We look back, as disappointed as we, we are, we look back and we thank God that we didn't go, otherwise we would have been stranded somewhere out in the ocean on a ship and probably would have come down with the virus ourselves. So in everything, we just need to put God in it, not to fear and to not to be afraid of planning, but just put God in, in it because each day we all walk by fate. We do not know what's around the corner because we can't see it. And so whether you're believers or not, we all walk by fate. So we give thanks and we give him all the glory that we didn't, that it was cancelled just at the right time. And we weren't stranded, gone on a holiday, stranded at sea, not, see, not being able to enjoy ourselves. So we just lift God up and we give him praise for, for all his mercy and grace. We, th we thank him daily. So put him in your plans and not be afraid to plan because we, you know, God is in everything. And like um, Proverbs chapter 3 says, verse 6, in, in everything, in all your ways to acknowledge him and use direct your part. So have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye. Let's turn to the word. Oftentimes when we think about love, we think about the romantic quality. We think about that experience of being in love with another individual. And yes, there is much that we can draw from how we feel. There's a saying that says love is blind. And I think it's important to recognize the truth and the power of that blindness. Because if we were to see someone completely and know everything about them, we may never experience love. 
It is only God who is able to see our faults clearly and still love us. And as God is able to do that, he also enables us to love even with the fault. And so this morning, as we think about unconditional love, I want us to ask ourselves the question, is my love for others conditional? Is my love for God conditional? And if so, what are the conditions that I lay on the relationship and how is it actually working? What then is the meaning of unconditional love? There's no mystery. It simply means love without any conditions. No ifs, no buts. Given freely. I love you. And it is not dependent upon what you do, who you are, how you respond. I love you. And that is the love that God brings to us. A love that asks nothing of the person. A love that gives everything. A love that is always there, sharing and caring through the good times and the bad times. It is a love that is effortless. It flows naturally from the heart. There is no preconceived idea about how, but it springs from the heart. And so love finds expression as it flows out. A love that is still powerful and present, irrespective of whether or not it is reciprocated. What then, therefore, is the, the root of unconditional love. How are we able to, to love with that kind of love? We cannot love unless we have experienced love. He says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God so loved that he gave his only son. At the root of unconditional love is one, understanding, two, acceptance, and three, forgiveness. Learning to love unconditionally is freeing, my brothers and my sisters. When we come into the presence of God and reflect upon his love for humanity and begin to allow that love to flow through our hearts, we will begin to experience a freedom that is unknowable. A joy that is far beyond the joys we have experienced. Yes, I say to you, the greatest example of unconditional love is the love that God showed to our world by sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we might be able to reconnect with the source of love and to be able to grow up into the individual that God intended us to be. How do I know, my brothers, if I am loved or I am loving unconditionally? Ask yourself these questions. How am I relating to the people around me that I say that I love? When I act, am I looking for that action to be repaid or to be reciprocated in one way or another? Or am I just allowing my heart to flow out? Am I seeing a need and responding? Am I doing those things for the individual without any thought of self receiving a payment? If you are doing what you're doing with the idea and the thought that I will receive something in return, then I say to you, question your motives. Because the fact is, when it is not returned, a root of bitterness can spring up within us. And we will say, okay, I will not do anything for him or her again, 
because it was not acknowledged, it was not appreciated, it was not in any way applauded. My brothers and my sisters, love must be allowed to flow out of our hearts and touch the unlovable. That which we give must not be given with the intention to receive something back, but remember how God loved you and let that love flow through your heart. If you have never experienced love, I can understand the difficulty in embarking upon a path of becoming selfless. But it is there that we find true love. It is there that we find real peace. It is there that we find contentment and power. A person who truly loves, first and foremost, they think of the other person first rather than of themselves. They look to the needs of others rather than their own needs. The person who loves unconditionally is one who respect another person, respect the need, the space, the desires of another person. A person who loves is one who can see your potential and support you in your dreams. A person who loves is the one that looks not so much to your faults, but looks to the possibility of what can happen in you and treat you not as you deserve, but as you need. A person who shares unconditional love or who is receiving unconditional love recognizes firstly that there are times when I am not worthy of love because of what I've done. But yet I am receiving this love. A person who is loving unconditionally, they look not to worthiness. You know why? Because it keeps no score. But always seek to respond to the need of the other person. It brings a liberty and a freedom that enables you to be yourself. Without feeling I have to be this or that. Because when you love someone unconditionally, you allow them to become their true self. what is love you may ask we're talking about unconditional love at the start i said it is almost tied up with the romantic love but i want to say to you my brothers and my sisters it is a love that is concerned about humanity dignity a love that conveys hope and love that transcends our understanding. It responds to the need. Love is a many faceted, beautiful and precious treasure. And those of you who are experiencing that wonderful, beautiful quality of love will understand what I am talking about this morning. But those of you who find yourself in the pits where you seemingly are not receiving any love, if you want to start receiving love, let me say to you this morning, you need to start giving love. You need to allow the loveliness of God to change your ugliness. You need to allow that beauty that comes from Christ to change the bitterness and to set you free so that you can rise up on the wings of love. The first facet of love that the writer here explores after saying that though I, ha may, I may have the ability to speak all the languages of the earth and understand the language of heaven, if I don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. Though I can have the gift of prophesying, of foretelling what will happen, if I have not love, it means nothing. And though I become very generous and benevolent, and give all that I have if I don't have love. It means nothing. And though I may allow myself to go through hardship and suffer for someone else. If I not have love, it means nothing. What is love then? What is this many faceted beautiful treasure of which I speak? The unconditional love that flows from the heart of God. And not only challenges but changes and calls us into service to be part of the kingdom he's building firstly he says love is patient love is patient 
You see, in order to begin that process of allowing love to grow within us, we need to look beyond ourselves, to look at our life and to see how am I fitting into society? How am I responding to others? How am I behaving? Is there any patience that is shown within me? What is patience? Patient, my brothers and my sisters, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems, or sufferings without becoming annoyed or anxious. Patience is about having endurance, persevering through difficulty, making up your mind that you're not going to give up on the situation. Time and time and time again, you could have walked away. Time and time again, you could rationalize why you should not be patient, why you should no longer associate with individuals. But my brothers, my sisters, remember, we're human beings in whom the Spirit of God resides and God is bringing about a change in us. And we need to develop a patience to encourage one another to become what God intended them to be. When you see someone who is down, see them through the eyes of God as what they intend to be and approach them in patience acknowledging that there is an understanding that maybe somewhere along the road you've taken the wrong path finding yourself where you are and seek to administer to them something of the grace of God why because you're understanding that had it not been for the grace of God you could not be where you are today you would not be who you are today you would not have the assurance that you are a child of God. It said love is kind. You know, often kindness is seen as weakness. Being kind requires courage and strength. What does it mean to be kind? It means that you have a friendly personality, a friendly persona, a generous heart. A considerate spirit. You're ready to befriend all people. You're ready to give. You think not about receiving. But to give to share. What you have. Because you know the joy of receiving from God. The word tells us give. And it will be given to you. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. And that means, my brothers, my sisters, love in abundance. That means allowing the facets of love to be evident in your life. To allow kindness to be part and parcel of who you are. The way you speak, the way you respond. Your willingness to forgive and to let go and to move forward. Your willingness to receive the power of God into your lives. He then tells us that love is not envious. In other words, love is not resentful of others' good fortune. How do you feel when you see someone thriving? What does it do to your heart? Do you celebrate with them? Or do you feel somehow that should be me? It could be you by allowing God to be in your heart. When you have Christ in your life, you know who you are. And there is no need to be envious of those who are prospering are seemingly prospering because you don't know what they're going through. And whether you do or not or how they gain what they have, remember that God has something for you. And who you are is not determined or dependent upon the things you possess, but it's about the relationship you have in God and the relationship you have within your world. So if you find envy taking root in your life, throw it out, root it out. And ask God to forgive you and to put other work, to put in its place a joy that comes from seeing others thriving. It is not boastful. It is not boastful. Instead, what does it mean to be boastful? You know, when you have this excessive sense of self-satisfaction of what you have achieved, and look at me, hey, and you behave as though you are better than others. That is not love. Love is that which recognizes your privilege and your blessing. And you are prepared to share what you have with those who are less fortunate than yourself. Love is not about being proud. 
and marginalizing those who seemingly are of a lower state than you are. Let me tell you, we're all on level ground. There are those of us who are more fortunate than others. There are those of us who have taken different paths and ended up different places. But all of us have the same need. Need to be treated with dignity and respect and to give an opportunity. Need to recognize the good that resides in each other. I say to you this morning, if you are looking around and saying, hey, aren't I wonderful? Aren't I lucky? Look what I have. I'm glad I'm not like Tom, Dick, or Harry who have nothing. Or not as fortunate as myself. Maybe you ought to say, how can I share what I have with them? Recognizing that God has given to you those who have much, much is required from them. Love is not envious. It is not boastful. It is not proud. Love, it tells us, never dishonor a person. But always maintain their dignity. Love never seeks to speak ill of another person. It doesn't matter whether you are justified. But what you do is to protect each other. And to seek to help others to come through. So that they might begin to blossom. And to grow into the person they intend to be. Love never seek its own. But recognizing that happiness and joy is only found when those around us are also sharing in the goodness of life. What goes round comes round. If you share what you have, you will not lose what you have, but God will bless you with more so you can share it. Love seeks the good of others. Love don't get angry easily, but it takes a step back and it creates the room for others to work out their situation and then to come. Love places no blame. But love recognizes the path that humanity is on and love seeks to build a better path. Unconditional love is exactly what it says. There are no conditions. And here as I conclude this morning, it says love keeps no records of wrongs. It forgives. Can I just ask you to take time and to Check over on your, your docket, your, you know, the records that you keep of what people have done to you. Look back over your life. Think back about the things that you're still holding on to. And maybe justifiably so. Think back as to how it has impacted your life. See whether it has enriched your life and whether it has robbed you from experiencing life in its fullness. I want to challenge you this morning. All those hurts that you're holding on to. I want to challenge you to throw them away. I want you to challenge you to take that book of remembering the hurts that you have experienced and burn it this morning. I want to challenge you to go back on your word where you said, I will never speak to that person or that person again. I will never allow that person back into my life. I want to challenge you to open the door, fling wide the door of forgiveness and embrace those you have excluded from your life for so long. Love keeps no records of wrong. The Bible tells us, how can you say you love God and yet you hate your brother? It simply means that if you are a believer, then you have no right in keeping malice with anyone because of something they have done to you, irrespective of what it is. Because as the Lord prayer says, the Lord's prayer says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness simply means forgiving, forgetting, letting go, not using what someone has done in the way you deal with them, but letting go of it. And you know something, friends? The benefit of forgiveness of letting go is ours. The victim. But if we hold on to the hurt, we remain the victim. When we let go of the hurt, we begin to thrive and we create room in our hearts for newness to spring up. We're not saying it was okay or all right for what they have done to us. No, we're not saying that. But we're saying we are letting go of that. 
and we're moving forward. The reason why we do some things is because we are people who are fallen and we do wrong things. And that's why God is so gracious and so merciful. When we come to him, he forgives. If you love someone, you must be willing to forgive and to let go. And I can assure you this morning that if you are prepared to let go of those hurts, you will see life springing up in that dry place. Your eyes will be open. Your heart will be changed. You'll begin to smile again. Have you ever noticed some people never smile? You know why? It is because of the hurts they're carrying in their hearts. That burden is so heavy. And they go through life pretending or going through a motion. They're trying to go up a hill with an impossible burden. If you've come to Christ, let go, my brothers, my sisters. Let go and draw near to him. Love takes no pleasure in evil. Are you looking to take revenge? Are you plotting? Love takes no pleasure. It doesn't matter what that person is doing. When you see someone suffering, then you need to go along and help them. You need to let go of the hurt and the harm and respond to their needs. The story of the Good Samaritan speaks about the individual who did not look at the Jewish person who looked down at him, but he saw the need. He could have put the boot in. But no, what did he do? He stopped. He was on his way, but he stopped. And he responded to the need. Are you stopping and responding to the need of your so-called enemies? With an open heart, a generous heart, are you prepared to go all the way? Not only did he minister to him, he put him on his donkey and he took him to the hospital and he said, when I come back, I will pay you whatever it costs to look after him. Restitution, renewal. That's what unconditional love is about. Seeing the need and responding to that. No desire in seeing evil or harm coming to anyone, but rejoices in the good. It rejoices in the truth. And it tells us, my brothers, my sisters, it says love always protects. Do you protect your children? Do you protect your, sim your siblings? Do you protect your parents? Do you protect your neighbors? Do you protect those you know in the way you respond to them? It always trusts. Do you find it difficult to trust anyone? You know why? Because you... The harm and the hurt that as you have experienced are still impacting your life so you cannot trust anymore. Learn how to let go of those things. I plead with you this morning and begin that road of unconditional love. It says love not only trusts but it hopes for the best and it perseveres. It perseveres. If you persevere in love, it will come he says love never fails the antidote then to all the ills of the world is to love unconditionally to look beyond our own needs and see the needs of others and to reach out and to minister and to open our hearts and to let them in and when you begin to do that your life will never be the same my prayer is that together if you are not already on that road of loving unconditionally, that together we may embark upon that road and ask Christ for the strength that we need, a love that is prepared to lay down. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, than one who is prepared to lay down their life for their friends. What about your mother? What about your father? What about that sister you haven't spoken to? Oh, that brother you haven't spoken to because of what they may or may not have done to you. What about that son or that daughter? Is it time for you to shake off that pride and to reach out and start building a new relationship? Is it time to give up that argument of justification that continues to separate you from the love that you were supposed to be experiencing and enjoying? I pray that God will give you the courage. Not to wait for someone else to act, but to become the first mover in all relationship and to begin to love with a love that has no condition, no ifs, no buts, no ifs, no buts. May God take his word and place it in our hearts. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you and may he make his face to shine upon you. 
And may his grace be in you and through you, that you will become the carrier of the goodness of God, both now and forevermore. Amen. We sing this closing hymn. St. Francis of Assisi wrote this song. As we sing it together, let the Spirit of God flow into your heart and encourage you to be part of what God is doing. Ask the Lord to turn on that light so that as you begin this process of unconditional love, it will shine upon those closest to you and further afield. And they'll begin to see the living Lord in you and through you. May God bless you and may God keep you both now and forevermore. Let's share the grace together. May the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.